Stop. There we go. Matt, there's, what? There you go. There's your, there you go. There's your phone. What? Okay. what why? What? why? There's your, there's your phone. Okay. Yo, you support us up, Radar. Let me pop back in my phone. Michael, put the media. What up, Mox? Guys, Wednesday Night Wars, best wrestling night of the uh, of the week. We have NXT and AEW Dynamite. We got a total of five takeaways: three from NXT, two from AEW. Uh, not the best episodes of AEW Dynamite or NXT. NXT feels like it's been in kind of a lull ever since um, that first Super Tuesday, and you know AEW is kind of it's been hit or miss every once in a while. Um, you know, it's it's still kicking ass in the ratings compared to NXT, which, you know, is what they're hanging their hat on for the most weeks. But we're going to get into it. Uh, before we do it, I remind you guys to drop a like on this video, previous videos, and subscribe. And if you're watching the video, you're not subscribed to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you guys are alerted when new videos drop. Uh, follow the social media, the Instagram, the Twitter. Follow my live streams on Twitch. And appreciate any support I can get on Twitch. Uh, hit us up in the Discord. The uh, link is in the description below. Wrestling Marks United is the sub channel. Hit us up there. Let's talk about wrestling. Let's go through it. So without further ado, guys, get right into it. Our three takeaways from the Wednesday Night Wars, NXT, and AEW Dynamite. We're going to start it off with AEW Dynamite and with takeaway number one of the night. Um, you had Kip Sabian with Penelope Ford in the ring, introducing the best man, Miro, who's going to have his in-ring debut in AEW, and no spoiler alert, but he is the only guy in AEW now with dyed blonde hair. Um, so, you know, we'll see how long that lasts, but he has his first match. They're taking on Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss. Um, the match took a while for Miro to get in the ring. They were kind of just teasing him for him to get in. Yeah. He finally got in. Uh, really dominated, showed his strength, showed his athleticism. He's got a new look. Um, you know, remember when Rusev first started, he had the tight shorts with no shoes. Then he put shoes on because he broke his foot, supposedly, or uh, WWE just wanted him to wear shoes. Now he is wearing um, kind of like boxer, uh, like a, a professional boxer would wear. Uh, yeah, you like know, mid, shorts. Mid, mid-level boots, yeah. Yeah, and then kick and then kick pads uh, uh, with no knee pads. That was weird. So just he just has kick pads on with the boots. So it's interesting to look for him. Um, there's a one spot in the match where Miro gets knocked over the top rope. Looks like he really hurts his ankle or twists yeah. it. You know, one of those. Uh, and, oh, there you go. Got to use your quickness against a guy that size. Low bridge on Miro, and Miro came up. Oh boy, he's hurt. Well, you twist your ankle, it hurts a lot, and then it goes away. That seems to what happened here. Um, it looked like he legitimately hurt himself. There was a botch here where he throws Kip Sabian over, which has to catapult Kip Sabian onto Joy Janela behind them. It looks like Kip, Sa- Kip Sabian almost hit his head on the concrete. Put out though, look at this. Kip Sabian. Oh! Sabian. Yeah. Then Joy Janela tries to do a springboard off the railing, splash on Miro, totally botches that one. Perfect record. And now Joey Janela went for the crossbody, but Miro, did you see how Miro just hoisted Janela up by the head? Good God. The man's on one bad leg, and look at this. Oh. Um, but <laughs> it was what it was. The match was okay. Um, you know, he showed his aggression. Miro, he hit Sunny Kiss with the kick to the face and put the accolade, the camel clutch on him for the win. Yeah, uh, he looked good. I, li- I liked his entrance. Um, he's in better shape than he was ever in WWE, so is that. He's got the he's only platinum blonde left in AW, so that's saying something. Um, him with a tag team, why not? I mean, AW is the number one tag team spot of wrestling, so might as well keep going with that uh, aspect. Uh, the botches were the botches. If George knows the match, there's going to be some botches. I think mm-hmm. that's just the way it works. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't got no disrespect to George Janela, but some of his in ring work is not made for television. It's fun on the indies, but I don't know. He just, whatever. Uh, Sunny Kiss looked good, though. Um, he makes, you know, he's so athletic. He can make stuff look fun. You know, he's working on his, on his style and everything. So I, I do like that from Sonny, but Rusev was kind of the star. He was the most polished guy in the match. It, it looks like, like they're going Kip and, 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 um, and Miro as like the tag team. And that's where they were, they're going with it. And that's a new tag team to add in the division that has a lot of tag teams in it. We're in a, a, a way where with both companies where there's maybe too many tag teams in one and not enough in, in, in the other. So we're kind of in that mode right now. So we'll see where everything shuffles. And, you know, these guys got to put their, 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 their grind in and get up the ladder and, you know, be number two or, or number one contender soon. Um, but I kind of wanted uh, Miro to be by himself and come in. But, you know, we'll, we'll, they try something different with, with him. So we'll see where this goes. 
Yeah, they're trying, they're trying to make him the dominant guy in the tag team, so we'll see how long that lasts. But, guys, that's takeaway number one. Miro's first match, debut match in AEW. Uh, hopefully the ankle injury doesn't set him back. It looks like he was fine afterwards. Yeah, and um, he was smiling. He was laughing. Was yeah, so but it, it looked like he legitimately twisted his ankle on that spot. Um, but we'll see how he gets through that and where Kip Sabian and him actually go from here in a bloated tag team division. Uh, next thing on the show, we had Adam... Adam Hangman Page taking on Evo Uno with Kenny Omega on commentary. The match was, uh, it was all right. I mean, you know, I don't know. It was, it was a slow paced match. It just wasn't, I don't know. I mean, the styles clash or something like that, but um, yeah, uh, I don't know where the hell the storyline is going with, between Kenny and Hangman. It kind of just seems like, okay, Hangman's having his matches. Kenny wants to do commentary in all those matches. And that's pretty much it. Adam, Adam Hangman Page beats Evo Uno here. And um, you know, that's pretty much it there. Not much yeah. else going on there. I mean, it's it's gonna lead to Kenny versus Hangman. I mean, I think I think that's the goal of this. He, I'm, I'm sure Kenny or or Hangman will attack each other when next match when he's out on commentary, most likely. Most likely, yeah. We had a backstage segment with uh, Tony Schiavone interviewing the Young Bucks. He was uh, a bit apprehensive to knock on the door after what happened to Alex Marvez uh, two weeks ago. He opens the door. Matt Jackson. Opens the door and talks to talks to Tony. Tony brings up FTR. It upsets Matt Jackson. So Matt Jackson asks for Tony's phone and just smashes the phone along the mold the metal molding of the doorway and then throws a bunch of money at um, Tony Giovanni. So the heel turn continues. Um, it's just gonna be like little cocky, arrogant heels, I guess. Uh, you know, throwing their money around. So uh, we'll see what happens with there. Funny to see heels that actually have the the pencil and they actually book stuff. It's interesting yeah. to see how that yep. dynamic yep. will work out. Maybe they here's here's like a you. Kevin Nash. Yeah, maybe they'll maybe they'll play that up. Like, oh, okay, we're, we you know we 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 control booking, so we're gonna do whatever we want. But whatever. Next thing on the show, TNT Championship match: Brody Lee versus Orange Cassidy. Um, I don't know. Uh, for me, Orange Cassidy, I think they're having him wrestle too much. Like we're seeing too much of him. I think we're seeing too much of him and just him, him just having regular wrestling matches. Remember the thing before was like, you wanted to see if he was going to show the effort and, and when he was going to kick it on, yeah. but you can't do that every single week. So I don't know if it's okay, if it's good to have him out there all the time. Um, but he has been out there a while. I mean, yeah. a, a, a few times in a row ever since the Chris Jericho feud started. So um, whatever he takes on um, Brody Lee, you know, Orange Cassidy gets a lot of uh, offense in towards the middle of the match, but for the beginning of the match, Brody Lee dominates it. Brody Lee ends up winning this match, retaining his head. So Orange Cassidy does take the loss, which I'm not sure. Like, I mean, I don't know. You had him take a, beat Chris Jericho two out of three, um, you know, arguably the biggest star in the company. And then from there on, what do you do with him? He comes out during that parking lot brawl match. He has, like, a, another match before that. And then he has this match, and that's kind of it. But, guys, this takeaway number two – of the Wednesday Night Wars, and that's because after the match, after Brody Lee wins, a song plays on the screen. Then you hear wrestling doesn't only have one royal family. We know that's Cody. With all the pomp and circumstance that a man who I mean, has my, a, yeah. vest, a large invested stake in the company yes. and is one of the running bodies of the company. The last guy I thought we'd see tonight was Cody. Look at him. My God. My God, the amount of smoke, pyro this man had, and epicness to his entrance. Yes. He came out a new Cody Rhodes, back with the dashing Cody Rhodes black hair, um, all black suit. Had the, had the chain from the, the vest yep. um, hanging there. And he comes out, and he wails on the Dark Order. Brody Lee escapes. Brody Lee eventually later on would challenge him to a dog collar match. Um, you know, he has to, Cody has to um, agree to it next week, um, but that's what they're going. But yeah, Cody is back. He's a new look. Um, I, I mean, I, he's still a baby face, right? Um, but he's going to be more of like a, an aggressive style yeah, now. In, oh, yeah. Intense, intense, darker version of, of, of Cody. It's kind of like uh, he's, he's Batman now. He went from Bruce, saw his, saw his parents get shot, and now he's Batman. And, that, yeah. and that's kind of where, where he's going with the darker look. I liked it a lot, the, the entrance and everything. Um, I think JR kind of missed it for me. Uh, I just expected more from JR to like get me excited. Hyped, for, hyped for, about it. He wasn't hyped, hyped about it. He's like, there wasn't much. And, and, and here, there's Cody. That's it, pretty yeah, much. All yeah, yeah. yeah. And like, I just felt like it was, maybe it was the, the lack of crowd. I mean, there's a crowd there, but it's small. They, they weren't really that loud. Uh, you can't really tell they were there. Um, it just it was missing that aspect, but it looked good with the smoke and everything. And for a guy that 18 months ago was hammering a, a, a throne 
like giving an F you to Triple H on his, on, on his entrances. This was a Triple H type entrance. And let, let, let's not get that twisted. This is a Triple H type entrance, um, which is expected. I mean, like you said he's heavily invested in it. So, but it was it, it, it was nice. It was cool. We'll see where his, you know, I, I'm enjoying seeing this. He was gone for a month or so. Now he's back darker, more aggressive. His family got taken out. His wife got taken out. Everybody's, it just, you know, he's focused. He's darker. He's going to do whatever it takes to get back his title and get respect back on the Nightmare family. Yeah, that's the reason for his t- his turn was what happened to his wife, what happened to his brother, all yeah. that. But Cody, let's not say Rhodes, is pure, pure money. This man is an absolute mega star. This guy, I, I can't believe WWE let him slide under the radar. Like he is so absolute brings truck he, he's money. A Rhodes, that guy, damn it, he's that a guy Rhodes, is fucking it. money, he's man. Rhodes, that is money. Rhodes. He has a presence to him. Um a demeanor to him, uh, tremendous all the way around, uh, so well-rounded, and he is just pure, pure money. Um, the best baby face in the face of the planet. Let's see how he changes his character a bit. Is he going to be more brooding, a little bit more of a, of a, I guess, an anti-hero? We'll see what happens. But, guys, that's takeaway number two. Cody's return to AEW after five weeks off. He will take on uh, Brody Lee, most likely sooner rather than later, in a dog collar match. Um, next thing to show, we had Isaiah Cassidy. Well, Isaiah Cassidy and Mark Quinn, the private party, along with Matt Hardy out in the ring cutting a promo. Now, I don't know if Matt is still kind of like out of it, but his his promo wasn't really all that. He 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 flubbed his words a lot, and he was kind of um, I don't know. He it wasn't a good promo from Matt. And then you had he's obviously talking about him getting attacked last week, and he says Chris Jericho's the one that did it. Here comes the inner circle coming out minus Sammy Guevara, and they cut the promo. But this whole segment felt kind of off. Felt like they were going through the motions. It seems like private party, especially Mark Quinn. Isaiah Cassidy was a little bit better, but Mark Quinn very uncomfortable speaking on the mic in a big spot like that, going up against Chris Jericho because you don't never know the rebuttal you're gonna get from Jericho. Um, he's gonna play it off the cuff and you know really come at you. Um, even even though he really did it in this thing but uh yeah the whole promo segment was kind of off it was weird private party not really good on the mic isaiah cassie a little bit better mark quinn but still not that great he challenges well first sammy guevara makes his return yeah which, there was no really hype about it. he just kind of came out and that was pretty much that it, it yeah. um it was pointless too because he had did absolutely nothing he, he mm-hmm. had no play in any of this but you have uh isaiah cassie challenging uh chris jericho to a match next week on dynamite so we'll see how that turns out but yeah this wasn't really a good segment um it didn't hit it missed um and and i miss broken matt or whatever he would call himself i missed the the, the faces of matt regular matt right now is kind of like we see regular matt for 20 years we want to go back to that crazy style we want to see the character continue to. this is like this is ps hayes with the hardy boys man all right all right yeah all right Uh, Guys, next thing on the show, we had FTR um, out there with Tully Blanchard and Tony Schiavone in the ring. They're talking about what they're going to do, and um, they're saying that now they will institute 20-minute brush with greatness rule, meaning that their championship matches will take place with a 20-minute time limit. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they don't have to – FTR doesn't have to pin the other team. They just have to survive the 20 minutes. I think that's the way it works. If, they, if it goes past 20 minutes, FTR wins the match, I think. I'm not sure. I don't know, but I, that's what I, that's the gist I got from the whole thing. But they're relying on Tully Blanchard a lot, right? Like he's he's running the whole promo, he's starting the whole thing. I'm not sure that's the best idea, um, but whatever. They're they're taking on um, what do you call it? Uh, they were they were gonna take on they're gonna take on SCU next week. This week, best friends come out. They were gonna take on them, but the heels agree. Then they they back out and say, "Oh, you guys are not fully recovered from the parking lot brawl match last week. We're not gonna do the match." They leave and they go away. Um, funny, interesting thing from Jr. Here, um, as FTR is leaving, the best friends say to FTR, "You know, we saw you guys hug, but we're gonna show you how you really do it." And they hug, and Excalibur goes, "Give the people what they want." And <laughs> uh, Jim Ross was like, "I guess." You know, he's not a fan of the hugging thing and yeah. how, they, how they play that in there, which I think they yeah. rely on that too much. It's hokey. It's too shticky. It's like a shtick they have. But I think they need to be more serious like they were last week. Coming off of that, they should stay a little bit more serious. Inside. Especially against FTR, where, like, this is the best the tag team on planet Earth. Titles, titles on the line. Yeah. You, you got to be more intense and this means something, not hugging and joking. It's not a joking matter. These belts mean something. 
Yeah, exactly. Next thing on the show, we had Hikaru Shida and Thunder Rosa versus Ivelisse and Diamante in a tag team match. Uh, fine little match. Shida and, and Thunder Rosa get the win here. It's still, I mean, I know what they're doing. They're cross-promoting NWA, um, and that's pretty much all this is, the entire thing. I think they're going to go to another matchup, Shida and Thunder Rosa, but that's pretty much all this is, just promoting uh, NWA and NWA Women's Championship. Uh, we'll see if Nick Aldis, um, I believe Nick Aldis is still the NWA champion. Yes, uh, yes. We'll, see, we'll see if he shows up there eventually later on down the road. But, okay, next thing in the match was the main event. But first, after the Miro match to open up the show, you had Eddie Kingston come out, cut a promo. He says he gets a title shot tonight against John Moxley because he was never eliminated from the Casino Battle Royal. Mm -hmm. Fine. Interesting, funny little thing. He says that him and he says him and Moxley were cut from the same cloth at one point, you know, running through the indies, the deathmatch, hardcore stuff. But Moxley sold out and went to the land of sports entertainers. Sold out! And he went to the land of sports entertainers. I never did! Obviously, you know who he's talking about, WWE. Yep. So I thought that was funny. Moxley came out, confronted him. Uh, there was a breakup. The match happened. Um, I, Eddie Kingston is very, very um, passionate, believable, talented on the mic. His, he has a just an extremely indie presence and look to his whole attire, his look. Everything yeah, is extremely w- indie. W- which is fine. I don't, I, it's fine with me only because it's AEW. This is, this is You're not a, expecting it to be a, a, I'm not expecting it to be. I'm just, you know, you want something different from WWE. You don't need all the all the super hyped up look and everything's like just the, you know, the the, the pageantry is so extra on WWE with lighting and everything. This is more just like a grounded more thing. So I don't mind it. And he comes off like a badass anyway, whether he's dressed in the tank top and some weird Long sweats, whatever. I don't care. He's he's like, I wouldn't fuck with that guy in real life. So whatever. Yeah, no, he seems like a tough guy from the street. So obviously, yeah, 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 yeah. he has that look. But I just mean like, you know, I'm just a use. Uh, I'm conditioned to see that on television, live yeah. television. It's like, you know, you, you see the guy's certain look and stuff like that. But yeah, he um he's he has an interesting style to him. He does. He looks like if you're Hispanic, you have an uncle that dresses like that who thinks he's still kind of young the way he dresses yeah, with yeah. the jeans short and shit <laughs> like that. But that, that's Eddie Kingston. But um, very, very talented um, on the mic and believable but the yeah. match itself physical they were slapping the living shit out of their chest um big time especially eddie kicks had some hellacious chops on him um yeah. but the match went on it, it was just a, it was just a beat down match um moxley chokes out uh eddie kingston and they st- referee stoppage he chokes him out he retains the aw world championship they get attacked by he gets attacked by the lucha brothers here uh here comes will hobbs to kind of save the day only for a little bit he gets knocked down they guys start getting beat up um darby allen comes in um, he's attacking people with the, you know, the, the defending Moxley and Hobbs with the skateboard, uh, attacking Lucha Brothers and Eddie Kingston. Here comes Ricky Starks, spears the living shit out of him. What else is next? Oh, it's Taz. Ricky Starks just. And uh, they get beat down. So it's just more set up. No Archer um, and no Brian Cage here. So it's just setting up the matches happening next week, six man tag. Well, Archer has COVID. So uh, he, th- ah. that's probably. That's that's probably why they had this match anyway, because they're you know they were having that whole tag team thing, uh, you know six man tag thing they were they were pulling through. Uh, but he's got COVID, so we're not sure. I'm guessing two two or three weeks he, he he'll be gone. So that that kind of puts that six man tag in the back burner. Unless they're going to use somebody else. Maybe they're using Eddie Kingston now to Could replace be, Archer. That's probably what it is. Yeah, that's probably that's probably what they're doing. That's why that's that's why they made this a thing. But um, yeah, I mean, okay, we'll, we'll see where this is going. Everything's good. Um, they the, the way it ended with with Eddie Kingston holding the head of 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 Mox. What was, say, Dean. It, it was, was kind of weird. weird. He was like yeah. yelling. I was like, all right, I don't know what the fuck's going on. But that, what that's yeah. supposed to mean. But okay, I mean, I'm into it. Let's maybe that'll be like a this is the next feud. Kingston gets his you know 18 years on the Indies, 18 years of busting his ass. He's got a you know a major push with the with the top guy in the company. So okay, let, let let's let's do it. Yeah, I did not know that about Lance Archer. That slipped under my radar. His COVID. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Probably uh, plug Eddie Kingston in there with uh, you know go against uh, with uh, Tad. I mean um, with uh, Ricky Starks and Brian Cage against yep. you know the other three guys. So guys, that's that's our. Um, Takeaways from AEW Dynamite. We jump over to NXT right now. Start off with takeaway number three, and that is the Women's Battle Royal to crown a number one contender for uh, the NXT Women's Championship to take uh, Io Shirai on an NXT TakeOver. Uh, before the match started, they showed a clip of Candice LeRae attacking and brutalizing uh, poor Tegan Knox's knee Jesus. in the back. Um, she was, you know, hurt her knee, and then she threw, like, a big metal cart into the knee, so she's probably going to be out for a while, what, what I assume, uh, you know, off TV time. So the Women's Battle Royal. Battle Royals tend to kind of suck. Um, women's 
over the top stuff is kind of tough because a lot of the women's are smaller in stature. So then to go over the top rope is kind of tough. Yeah. Um, but you had the two monsters in Rhea Ripley and Raquel Gonzalez for the majority of the match. They would end up pretty much eliminating each other for the most part, um, which is surprising that Rhea Ripley is the winner of this match. It yeah. will go down to the end between Candice LeRae and our girl Shotzi Blackheart and an interesting elimination by Candice LeRae. She kind of catapults, she's on the, on the steel steps on the outside, kind of catapults Shotzi off of that and eliminates her that way. Blackheart aside. Oh, wait a minute. A Blackheart's been eliminated. Candice LeRae is going to take over. She'll Candice Ray will take on Io Shirai at NXT TakeOver. It makes sense. Heel versus a babyface. Yes. Um, yeah, so she will take her on at TakeOver. You had Jaddy Gargano come out and celebrate. He, for some reason, is taking on, I don't know, he got the shot, whatever, but at NXT TakeOver, he's taking on Damian Priest for the NXT North American Championship, but Candice Ray wins this. Yeah, I thought it was uh, it was solid battle royal. I mean, battle royals are, 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 are you know, it's, as uh, Luke Gallows or Doc Gallows would say, it's forearm, 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 then knock somebody out. Uh, so that's basically what this was. It was it was solid though. I think the right person won only because she's been the best heel in the women's division on NXT. She's been on you know her. her they had a whole thing where the like, our guys were gonna take over NXT, and this is kind of like you know it's taken yeah. a, a, a bit of time for Candice to get you know, to be in big matches and be in, in, in a big thing. Uh, so this is her chance. Maybe she wins it. I think she might win it. I think, you know, because EO Ripley looks really good on paper, but it's baby face, baby face. And that's not always the greatest story going into a match. So maybe Candice wins it and then her versus Rhea. You know, you, you, you never know because, you know, Rhea is in the background. That's She's going to take over the, the division soon enough. It's kind of like waiting for her. But um, I, I think it's part to go with Candice in this. Keep, keep the Gargano – heel we're gonna take it over nxt mr and mrs nxt let's do let, you know let's keep doing that and this was a smart play by nxt to get canis array you know in a meaningful storyline yeah it makes a ton of sense um it's uh, very interesting we all, yeah uh, run, right now um ripley's gonna take on raquel gonzalez and the type of yeah, yeah. side feud so we'll see what happens with that but guys that's takeaway number three next thing on the show was jake atlas versus tomaso champa a feud that's been going on for like two weeks now um match was very sh- it was short but it was entertaining atlas looked good against a, a guy of the caliber of champa champa's yeah. tremendous as his heel work tremendous as per usual he's such a well-rounded well-shaped character um from top to bottom champa would get the win here um so yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll see if the feud continues or Champa goes on to something else after this. Okay, next thing on the show, and it's takeaway number four of the Wednesday Night Wars. And it's weird because you have a backstage segment where, um, you know, you see a, a few wrestlers there with William Regal and Fandango just about Sherlock Holmes. I kind of hope to bring back the fashion files, but just not do it too heavy like they did before. Um, but he comes out with this interesting idea of having, like, these guys – one guy from different tag teams team up. So they have Roger Strong and Danny Birch versus Fabian Aikner and Raul Mendoza. So they're splitting up teams and just kind of mashing them together uh, to see who will face Brizango. Um, it's pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, I found it kind of odd that they would do this, um, but I guess they're trying to shake things up in order to compete with AEW and in in maybe in the ratings. Um, tag team style, I guess. I, I guess, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know why you had to split the tag teams up, but whatever. Yeah. This, uh, I, um, I, yeah. Uh, it may, it may, I, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I don't know. It, it doesn't make any sense. I didn't really love it. I thought it was kind of dumb. I thought, uh, why would a tag team that's put together randomly by by the by the babyface champions yeah. be a, a formidable foe against a, a, a you know a, the, the the tag champs, the best tag team in the in, in on, like on the brand? It doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't uh, add to it. Uh, I, I I thought it was a a wash. I don't know. Didn't yeah. really enjoy it. Because, like, so the, the end thing of this is it, it's convoluted, right? So it's, like, confusing, yeah, right? It's, so it's, 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 it's one member of each team joins up with another member of another team, and then if that team wins, their teams face each other. So Birch and Roger Strong won, so that means Undisputed Era will take on Oni Lorcan and Danny uh, Birch. Just, which yeah. See, you could just – you, you like, right, that, that kind of flies by. Because the way it was explained on TV, I was kind of like, I don't understand Yeah, it, right? I, I still didn't get it. I, I just thought the like, the guys that won were, were, were a new tag team. and they were, Okay, yeah, so that, you could, yeah. That, that's that what was, I thought. I was well. completely lost. I had no idea yeah. what I was watching. <laughs> that's what I thought as well. But that's – that that from what I'm reading, that's what's going to happen okay um, right. which doesn't make much sense they could have just had a mini tournament right there so you could yeah. have had mm-hmm. like birch and lorcan take on uh strong and and bobby fish 
then from there they face you know Fabian Aikner, I mean Imperium, and it's, I don't know. It's this, this is this is when you overthink stuff. You you don't really have to overthink stuff. Just keep yeah. it simple, keep it easy. NXT is really good at that, and this was one of those. I don't know if if somebody from the Raw roster came and started just writing stuff down next uh, to yeah. Blade. That's that's what it kind of felt like. I was like, what the hell is this? What am I? If it's so hard that you have to sit there and really think about what's going on, then it's not good. It's just not good. Yeah, it's not good, but it's cool to see a different tag team will face Bruce Angle. So you have Undisputed Era, Danny, Bork, Danny Birch, and Oni Lorcan. So we'll see that next week. Um, and we'll see what happens going into NXT TakeOver. Moment. So we will see these two tag teams face each other to decide who will go up against Bruce Angle for the NXT tag team. Bruce Angle hopefully uh, has a lengthy, fun, exciting, and hilarious title run. Next day on the show, we had Damian Priest taking on Austin Theory. Um, yeah, Austin Theory's there. Doing his thing, um, keeping him low key. Lot. He's losing a lot. Keep him, but keep him low key. Uh, not pushing him too much with all the size stuff that's gone on uh, with him. So he does lose this match. Um, interesting, like the way Damian Priest's character has changed after winning North American Championship. He has more of like a a, a sleek like playboy type i mean the way he he talked to sarah schreiber during the interview he was like at the end he was like oh you you know you do you're a great interviewer i hope uh, i'll see you later at the after party so stuff like that like he wasn't like that previously right didn't come off that way now he's like that now it's like i guess a baby face that he is yeah he's just uh you know in growing his character changing it up evolving into something different it's always good to keep things fresh uh change things up kind of like what 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 cody did on on aw just kind of be the same character, but let's change it up. Keep it fun. It's it's the old Jericho. He's a, he has a thousand different you know characters that, that, that he's good. Just keep keep everybody fresh. Keep pretty good. Uh, he's he's got the Razor vibes going a little bit though. He's got the Razor. He Mo does, vibes. right? He does, yeah. Yeah. So I I think that's where they're where, where they're getting their, their this character from is just they're they're taking a little bit of Razor. They're putting him in. He 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 does kind of fit the the style. Tall. Um, maybe he's a little more bulkier to be Razor, but yeah, definitely yeah. has a look. You had Johnny Gargano attack. Uh, Damian Priest after this match, um, he's taking on Damian Priest at NXT TakeOver from North American Championship. Next thing on the show, we had Ridge Holland versus Antonio DeLuca. Uh, Deluca, that's what he took on. He destroyed him. Uh, you know, uh, Holland destroyed DeLuca, destroyed him, wins the match. So they're Hanson, building him baby. up to be like a, I guess, like a monster type, a really badass former, ru- they showed his background, former rugby player. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's a big man. So he's a big, yeah, strong guy. He's in good shape. Guy's in good shape. I mean, he looks like a badass. I wouldn't mess with him. Yeah, it does definitely. So he, we'll see what they, how they build him going forward. Next thing in the show, and it's the final takeaway, takeaway number five, is the main event. It's the Gauntlet Eliminator match. So this is an interesting concept. It's a, a gauntlet match that's an elimination, but guys come in at intervals. So it's kind of like a Royal Rumble, Rumble with a gauntlet, gauntlet match. Yeah. with a, yeah. It's, Again, it's confusing. It's a yeah. lot going on there, but they're trying to, they're throwing <laughs> shit against the wall to see what sticks to try to uh, battle AEW in the ratings. I do not think and uh, NDC should change nights to like a Tuesday and not compete. I think no, they should no, compete no. directly. Are, are um, they are they talking about that? There was people saying that they should and stuff like that. No, but no, I, no, I, no, I don't no, think no, they no. should. Yeah, that makes you sense. are the billion dollar company. You are not going to sit there and change your day for for a, a startup company that's like just barely a year old. Yeah, Get exactly. The hell out yeah, of it here. makes no sense. Okay, so the match starts with Kushida and uh, Kyle O'Reilly. Um, and the match will go on. Bronson Reed will make make his way to the ring um he would be the one to eliminate kushida which i wasn't a huge fan of um but whatever uh, velveteen dream came out uh and hit kushida with the dream valley driver um so you know he was the one that you know helped eliminate kushida so that 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 feud will continue going to take over kushida and velveteen dream um next to come out uh, after this was timothy thatcher um they would go on then cameron grimes would come in so all four guys would be at the ring at the same time um slowly but surely they would eliminate each other it would be cameron grimes versus kyle o'reilly at the end and kyle o'reilly wins this match he will take on N- uh, nxt champion finn balor at- with the knee wait a minute kyle o'reilly is going to take over here is your winner at NXT TakeOver, which is interesting. Kyle O'Reilly, a former Super interesting. Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion. Yeah, yeah, big um, time. So, you know, he branching out as a singles as Adam Cole takes a back seat and kind of goes away for a little bit. Um, it's pretty interesting. I would like to see it. Um, I, you know, I don't think he's going to win, but he'll, no, probably no. Have a, he'll probably have a tremendous showing against Balor. I kind of want to yeah. see Balor versus Kushida, but whatever, we're not going to get it right now. I have, uh, you know, uh, just, you know, as of this moment, we're not going to get it. But Kyle O'Reilly, congratulations to him. He will take on Finn Balor at TakeOver for the title. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was a – it was a 
entertaining match, a lot going on. Once they got into their groove and it was just like the like everybody was in the ring and they were just going, then it, and then it started to make more sense. It was a fatal forward or elimination forward. Then it was fine, right? The, to start the match was kind of weird. Uh, they went with Kyle O'Reilly. I think it's fun. I think it's good. I think we, we got to build new people. We can't see the same matches. We can't see the same guys fighting for the title. Finn's a champ. Let's give him some some bust ass matches, and he's gonna have a great match. I think Kyle O'Reilly is awesome. I think him and Finn can have a great yeah. match. It, it can steal the show. It could be the like one like a match of the year type, honestly, just because both guys are so good in the ring. Um, so I I do like that. NXT's been building younger guys, and not younger guys, but guys that that that, that have been there for a little bit, but haven't really got like the push, or they've been in yeah. tag teams, or they've just kind of been kind of mirandering around. Now they've you know they they're they're putting them in big spots, and I, I think it's good. This is how you learn. Who you got? What's your big star? Maybe you get lightning in a bottle, and and, and O'Reilly becomes NXT champion one day because 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 uh, of this performance that, that that he has against against Finn. You know, you just, yeah, that's, it, way, it, that's it, why you build more more stars. It could catapult him in the eyes of 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 you know fans, Triple H and yeah, everybody else. Everybody. Well, I mean, the fans fans a lot of fans remember seeing him as you know Ring of Honor champion, yeah, but, Adam Cole at the Tokyo Dome for but Russell still Kingdom. but still NXT is a, is a, is a, a different animal. It's you know it's more people watch it, you know, it's, it's, it's WWE. It's a, you know, bigger brand and something where you can be like, Hey, we're building more stars on NXT where we're, we're capable to take on anybody on raw or SmackDown. And, 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 and I, th- I think that's the goal Triple H has with this is making this, you know, secretly the brand of, yeah. of both shows. I, I think that's what he wants to do and show the old man that he can do it. You know? Oh, he's doing a great job of it, especially with him not being having anything to do whatsoever with Retribution. Yes. Um, <laughs> check out the Retribution video I dropped, uh, me shitting all over uh, the reveal of Retribution, guys. But that's Wednesday Night Wars. Those are our five takeaways from NXT and AW Dynamite. I appreciate you guys for watching the video. Uh, remember to share this video, like this video, let people know what's going on with the channel. Appreciate any support we can get. And without further ado, if it doesn't work for you, brother, do not do the job. Later, Marks. <laughs>